could the Fjordland moose actually still be out there? Here's something to really get you questioning their existence into the modern day. All right, everyone, how are you all doing? Welcome along back to a brand new video. And today we're gonna to be talking about something a bit strange, something a bit odd, but something that has captured my attention and ultimately it's got me fascinated. And that something is, are there moose on the loose? in New Zealand. Before we get into it though, don't forget to smash a like on this video if you breathe oxygen. Also, if you've seen a Tasmanian tiger, don't forget to subscribe. And if you've seen a black panther the size of a Labrador, don't forget to check out the Patreon. <laughs> a big shout out to the current members and Patreons. You guys are absolute legends. Thank you so much. But now then, what's going on here? Moose in New Zealand? What's that about then? Now, for those that are new to my channel, I like finding weird animals. Weird animals, especially where they shouldn't be. For example, the UK shouldn't have scorpions, but it does the uk also shouldn't have wallabies but it does and the uk also shouldn't have walruses but from time to time it does none of those should be in the uk but it turns out they are they're wild and they're chilling just happy and free that stuff interests me and upon hearing something like that ultimately i want to go and find it so this is new zealand's equivalent right they don't have a native moose but people keep reporting that they have in fact seeing a moose. So let's go right back to the start for this one and try and find out why people are seeing moose. So in 1900, 14 moose were captured in Canada and they were setting sail towards New Zealand, which was going to be their new home. Now, unfortunately, a storm at sea actually killed off 10 of the moose. So arriving into New Zealand were only four. They were kept in stables for a few weeks until eventually being released into Hokitika Gorge, which by the way, is absolutely stunning. Just look at that. Now it is reported that three of the four moose made their way up the gorge and disappeared off into the sunset all nice and that and one of the moose stayed around in the local area for about 14 years now it's a little bit hazy here and i'm not sure if it's totally accurate but apparently of those three that made their way up hokitika gorge only one of them survived until after 1903 now whether that's true or not it remains to be seen because we now move on to 1910 and another release of moose is going to be happening in new zealand now you're probably thinking why are they releasing moose into new zealand and well, basically, they wanted to shoot them. They wanted to load their guns and just pop them. That's it. So this time in 1910, there were 10 animals that were going to be released. There were going to be six females and four males released into Supper Cove in the Dusky Sound. But within two weeks of their release at Supper Cove, one of the animals was shot dead and one of them had broken their leg in a fight with another moose upon the actual release. So we're down to nine animals now and one of them, one of them is a bit dodgy. So out of the 14 initially released animals in two separate locations it's not looking likely that these animals survived up until the present day which is now 2022 we're talking over a hundred years after their initial release it's not sounding very promising is it considering the fact as well that these first initial animals from the 1900s they might have not even made it past three years and they might not even have made it to supper cove because if you look on a map hokitika gorge is like up here somewhere and supper cove is down here somewhere they're quite far away it's also quite difficult terrain to traverse into as well and it's it's big right it is big mountains everywhere it's not the easiest and it's fair to say those two releases might never have met each other and besides that fact in the second release when there was only nine animals is that enough to maybe make a population going forward for about 100 years or so see now as the moose were released in 1910 in supper cove they were allowed to get on with their lives the aim was for them to start reproducing and then more and more until they had an established population and there were the occasional sightings and after 13 years after the release in supper cove New Zealanders at that time were legally allowed to try and hunt these moose. You did have to get a permit, but you still were allowed to do it if you got one of those. But also in that year, 1923, that is when the first recorded photograph was taken of a moose in the Dusky Sound. And it shows two animals at Supper Cove where they were initially released. Skip forward two years later, and we're now in 1925, and two animals were photographed swimming across the Seaforth River, also in Supper Cove. Skip it forward another two years to 1927, and exactly the same thing. Two animals swimming across the river in Supper Cove. Another two years later, and this time it's quite sad but a fella by the name of eddie herrick shot one but the interesting thing about this one is that he claimed that this animal was well past its prime which could indicate through the time frame that we have that this could have been potentially one of the animals that was first ever released into the country in 1934 now and the same bloke again he shoots another moose and it was thought at that time in 1934 when this moose was shot that this was the last one and now it was extinct in New Zealand and that's how it stayed until 16 years later and we get to 1950 and again another man 
shoots a moose. 1951, and two moose are shot this time. 1952 now, and this is the year in which the last moose was recorded in New Zealand. So in this case, one animal was shot and then one animal had a few pictures of it taken. So this is the last recorded photograph we have of New Zealand moose. And that is about 70 years ago now, 70 years. So it would seem the chances of them still being around is really quite unlikely, isn't it? Except a man by the name of Ken Tustin, who is a wildlife biologist. Now he has been on the search for them for years and he's reported back some very interesting things. In 1972, Ken did a survey of the area and he reported back finding browsing signs of moose, but not only that, he also found an antler. So 20 years after the last recorded evidence of moose being in New Zealand, this man goes and finds an antler and some browsing signs. By browsing signs, I mean like vegetation that's been eaten. So that would suggest that they had made it up until the 70s, but that's still not very good for us because that is 50 years ago now. So here's something to really get you questioning their existence into the modern day. In 1995, a time-lapse camera managed to capture one still frame of what appears to be a moose in New Zealand. Now, it has the right shape to it, but the quality is bad as it is one still frame from a time-lapse video. I mean, it looks like a moose, but again, it might not be. And this is 27 years ago now, but could this be the evidence to prove that moose are still there in New Zealand at that time? I mean, it could be, but I'll do you one even better than that. Because in 2001 and 2002, hair was found on branches in the Dusky Sound region. These hairs were then subsequently DNA tested, and guess what the results came back from that DNA test? That's right. Moose. So that pretty much proves that moose made it into the 21st century. So with that DNA evidence to back up the idea, there's a very strong claim now for this to still be a thing. We're gonna skip it on to 2015 now and Ken Tustin, the wildlife biologist, who's facilitated all of this, the DNA, the browsing signs, all of that sort of stuff. In 2015, he said he also came across more browsing signs. So that, and that now brings us up to seven years ago. So we're getting closer and closer. And now to make it even better, in March 2020, it's just two years ago now, there was apparently another one sighted in the Dusky Sound region. There was a man on a helicopter flight going through the Dusky Sound, and then all of a sudden, he saw this moose standing in a clearing. He told the pilot about this, and the pilot initially dismissed this man's claims, but after realizing how serious he was about his claims, they flew back around to try and find this moose. Unfortunately, they couldn't find it. The man on this helicopter flight then took his claim to Ken Tustin, who then flew out with them the next day to try and find any signs of the moose, but unfortunately, they couldn't. So there we have it. As little as two years ago, there are moose being sighted in New Zealand. There's DNA evidence in the last 20 years. Could the Fjordland moose actually still be out there? From the initial 10 that were released, can they have survived over 100 years to still be roaming free in New Zealand? Now, if you're asking me, based on everything that I've put forward in this video, I'm gonna say yeah. I'm gonna say yeah, they're still there. For me, the DNA in 2001 and 2002, that is too huge to ignore. You have to factor in that a moose's average lifespan is between 15 and 25 years as well. And not only that, but they breed roughly every year. So with that said, there could actually be a little population knocking about still in New Zealand. Now the lack of photo evidence is obviously quite a big statement, but this image from 1995, could that be the one that we're looking for? Could that be a Fjordland moose? Also, this part of the world is so rugged and so hard to traverse that maybe moose could have gone off the radar. Humans aren't really out in that region. So perhaps they could have been living on. Who actually knows? But that's where I wanna know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Do you think that the Fjordland moose could still be running around in New Zealand today? I wanna hear your thoughts. Make sure you type in a comment, letting me know what you think. Also, I'm gonna be going to New Zealand this year, so maybe animal anomalies the fjordland moose would you want to see that now if you've enjoyed this video don't forget to smash a like on it it really helps the channel in growing we've had some great growth recently and that's thanks to you guys smashing that like button and also if you've enjoyed don't forget to subscribe as well for more videos just like this one and check out the tasmanian tiger playlist that you can see above my head right now somewhere up there also if you want to consider being a patreon where you can help out fund trips to go and find these weird animals and do anything like that to really help me grow in that sort of sense as well that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you all to the members of Patreons who are currently a part of the channel. You guys are absolute legends. You're rock stars. I really appreciate it. But for now, I've been Cookie. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.